Hello and welcome back to another episode of I Read This Book. My name is Nishant Mittal and today I am so happy <laughs> to have Mr. Kashyap Devra join us. Kashyap is a serial entrepreneur from IIT Bombay who's had many successful exits under his belt. He was the founder of Chalo, which got acquired by Open Table, Chopati Bazaar, which got acquired by Future Group. His first company was started in college. It was called Right Half. He then went on to write this era-defining, this extraordinary book on the Indian startup ecosystem called The Golden Tap, which is, in my opinion, the best representation of Indian startup ecosystem ever. Uh, Kashyap is now building Hypertrack, which is by all means a terrific company. It counts Founders Fund, the Peter Thiel-led venture capital firm, as one of its investors. Uh, interestingly, Kashyap is also an investor in a lot of successful Indian companies like Chayos, Meisho, Topper, to name a few. No, he's not an investor at Spot Health at the moment, but you never know what happens. <laughs> Kashyap, thank you so much for joining us. It's so sweet of you. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing great. Thanks. Thanks very much for having me, Nisha. So Kashyap, uh, Golden Tap is a phenomenal book. I It's one of my favorites and I recommend it to everybody who asks me for a book recommendation in the nonfiction space in India. Uh, my question to you is, Indian nonfiction scene is in a very nascent stage at the moment. It generally consists of people writing, compiling short stories. But Golden Tap is like a full-blown narration kind of a book. It's, it's a solid story. What made you write the book? And also, how have things evolved since you've written The Golden Tap? Sure. Sure. So, you know, you chronicled my startup journey um, when I started writehalf.com in college. Um, that was at the peak of the internet bubble. There were very few internet companies at the time in India. Um, and, you know, tech startups was primarily Silicon Valley. And my first startup started in Bombay, you know, then sort of took me to the U.S. Then my second startup, uh, Chaupati Bazaar, was in India. There were many more tech startups at the time, but still much lesser compared to right now. And that journey went through the Great Recession of 2007, 2008, the financial crisis uh, that was primarily driven by, you know, in the US, but impacted everyone in the world. And, you know, that impacted the VC industry as well. And then my third startup was again started in Bombay, uh, but for the US market. And then I sold it to a public company in the US. And after that, I took some time off. And during that time, I saw that the Indian startup scene was exploding. Um, but I was in the U.S. at the time making my way back to India. So uh, I had two sort of uh, points of difference in my vantage looking at the startup explosion in India in the 2014-2015 time frame. One, I had seen it over 15-20 years. And I had the benefit of seeing the various cycles. Uh, there were very, very few companies in India in the first, then some more in the second and now many, many more in the third. So I could sort of see that bubble building. And the second vantage point is all my companies have been in the US-India corridor. So I had somewhat of an outside-in view to it. So I had this sort of unique vantage point, which um, sort of made me feel like oh, I can see something coming. I have a story to tell. And somehow a publisher reached out after uh, reading a blog post saying, hey, would you write a book? And thinking about writing a book, but, um, you know, one thing led to another and uh, here we are. That's pretty interesting, Kashyap. And I might sound like a fan here, but <laughs> which I am, but The Golden Tap reads extremely different from the rest of the books in the Indian startup ecosystem, uh, which, as I said, you know, most of them are collections of short stories and Golden Tap is a magnum opus when you read it in context. Was it as simple as a publisher reaching out to you and then you putting it all together? Was it not a premeditated thought that you always wanted to write a book like this? Because you're a very polished writer. This doesn't seem like a thing written on a hint. What was the process behind it? Yeah, look, it was a lot of hard work. When the publisher reached out, I said, look, I've never written a, a book. I've not even written long form blogs. Um, and he said, well, why don't you start? We'll see. And, um, you know, I think India in general is a very conversational culture. And, um, you know, 
my career was split between India and US and a lot of the books I read, especially nonfiction, were very substantive, very well researched, years and years of uh, work that has gone into the books I admire. Um, so my approach actually started with that. You know, I started researching a lot. I, I was planning to do a whole bunch of interviews, uh, sort of go, go back in time to all the cast of characters you see in the book and sort of, you know, get things on the table and, uh, you know, have a, a lot of stuff on paper and, uh, and so on. Then I started sort of testing uh, some of my early, you know, first two chapters with a group of readers and the publisher as well. And what I realized was some of my most researched chapters were, you know, the favorites amongst those who were um, sort of international readers, I would say, even if they were Indians, they were more globals. And some of my most personal and emotional stories where I was writing it, you know, from my vantage point, going back to this is what happened in the room, um, were very, very engaging for the Indian readers. And, uh, and there was a clear dichotomy. The Indian reader actually just skimmed over the research stuff and said, oh, this is very encyclopedic. I, take me back to that story, right? Give me more of that. So we made a decision early on in the book uh, that it will be more uh, story form, um, insider uh, sort of account, ringside view, which frankly made it easier in terms of, you know, I had to really focus and get back in time and refresh my memory of things, you know, when, as those happened. Um, I did not have to be comprehensive about capturing the history. The book doesn't claim to be a comprehensive account. It's purely a sort of personal account of, from my vantage point, this is how I saw things play out. Uh, and that's, that also led to a sort of very fast paced writing um, and I wrote it just like I would build a product. You know, uh, there was a group of early users who would give me feedback. I would give them more of what was working, take out stuff that was not working. And uh, finally, I think that the reason why it ended up being uh, a quick sort of thing is it led up to a moment where I was predicting a bubble first. And I was laying out certain scenarios that would play out uh, and how the bubble burst would happen. And as soon as I was just getting done with the manuscript going into editing, one of the three events happened. Yes. yes. And I realized that, wow, this, if I miss this moment, I will miss this moment, right? Because a lot is gonna be written about this, people will dissect it over time. I've already put in all these months of effort and uh, you know, a lot of years yeah, of thinking. All your life basically, yeah in some way. So I think then I had to convince my publisher to sort of accelerate that. And I would say since then, I've seen a lot of substantive work come out in Indian nonfiction. You know, India fiction has been truly sort of uh, very, very compelling and internationally acclaimed. But I think India nonfiction has become quite substantive as well over the last few years, which is quite hard for me to watch. Oh, oh so on that note, I read Something from Peter Thiel. Actually, I watched one of his podcast episodes where he said that Indian nonfiction market or even the Indian startup ecosystem isn't as mature as you would think it would be. Uh, how he zeroed on that thesis is that he launched Zero to One in China, he said, and it, and it sold millions of copies in no time. But the same book barely sold anything in India. He said something like 70,000. Now, I, when I walk on the streets of CP, I see Golden Tap right beside Shoe Dog and it's extremely heartwarming for me. It's beautiful. Uh, so I believe that it's selling well. It must be selling really well. But how, how's it selling from your perspective? Is it meeting expectations? How's it going? How's the mainstream audience reacting to it four years down the line? Yeah, you know, uh, India, uh, unfortunately, has not been a big market for uh, books uh, in general uh, relative to international markets even if you take uh, as percentage of population or uh, per capita uh, GDP and so on and you know when I was when I started writing and closer to publishing my question to the publisher was was this right so during you know while 
nailing down the contract. And then as the book was going to go on the shelves, a lot of my questions were around, what should I expect? How many copies? And um, I was quite surprised by how small the reading market was in India. And I think it's a combination of just overall literacy uh, and, and also just preferences. You know, uh, I think uh, the, the, it's a very niche market uh, in India for people who want to read. So, um, especially nonfiction, course, right? And especially nonfiction, right. So uh, a lot of reading is, uh, is concentrated towards fiction. And in fact, nonfiction, you would find a lot of it is dominated by either politics or sports or entertainment. Um, so, um, you know, if I can oversimplify hero worship, right? Mm-hmm. So you would have uh, basically a strong public figure and a book about that person just is, uh, flying uh, you know, is flying off the shelves as far as nonfiction is concerned. So I think the era of nonfiction, um, non-personality, nonfiction books is, is fairly new. I, I think overall, the market is increasing. It's going more digital uh, rather than paperback. Uh, COVID, of course, accelerates that trend further. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, obviously awesome to be uh, compared with some of the great books and uh, you know great entrepreneurs and investors of of our times. Um, I think to put it in perspective, it's just uh, you know it's the same set of people who are reading all these books. So, uh, I think. I'm fortunate that my book is able to reach that uh, audience in India. Mm-hmm. And that was my primary market. And I think what I'm also learning, um, and it's very heartening when I, I find people internationally, um, whoever is interested in the India market, mm-hmm. either starting up in India or investing in Indian startups, they somehow find my book and um, I hear from them saying they found it company. Yeah. So that was my second question. Uh, you are joining this call from San Francisco. You have been in Bay Area for a long time, I think, which leads me to leads me to believe that a lot of this book's distribution must also be going in the West or the Far East. I don't know. So, how is the international community responding to the book? You know, as compared to the Indian space, is it higher? Is it as per your expectations? How's it going outside India? Yeah, I mean, if you compare it with the India numbers, I think international uh, readership is high. Um, If you compare it with international readership, so if you compare the book with any sort of nonfiction, even related to the topic, which is a US-centric book, then it's nowhere there. And um, I think part of it is uh, that I don't have a US publisher. um, And, uh, you know, there was some... um, thought process early on about writing a US edition of the book. Mm-hmm. Um, there's, there's a very sort of different distribution uh, mechanism and rules of the game here. Um, to make it somewhat US mainstream market, uh, it needs to be rewritten because uh, as my early focus group revealed, you know, mm-hmm. it can't be completely a story uh, writing format uh, for, for this kind of topic. It has to be more substantive and uh, researched. So, uh, yeah, I would say U.S. readership has picked up organically through Amazon, through word of mouth, uh, and it's primarily people who've heard from the Indian readers um, that, oh, you're looking to invest in India, you're looking to move back to India, you've got to read this book, right? And that's how people find out. Terrific, terrific. So the Golden Tap had a lot of things. It had a lot of things about the perceived future of the Indian startup ecosystem from your lens. And many of those things have played out exactly how you said they would. But a few things have played out differently. So uh, are you looking at adding or subtracting anything from the book? Are you thinking of coming out with future edi- uh, new editions? Have you come out with a few already? How are you dealing with the change that has been brought about by time? Good question. Yeah, I, I don't have a plan to publish uh, more editions just yet. But like you said, there are uh, a lot of things where um, I would say three parts to it. One is it said a lot of things. It was one of the first to say it, but uh, then there was a lot of literature on it. Other people wrote. Um, 
both in the press as well as as books, which is along the same lines, right? So people are writing views that are consistent with um, what I expressed. I just happened to be one of the first ones. Then there are a set of things which I said then, which still remain contrarian and turn out to be true, which is obviously awesome for me in hindsight to look at and go, oh, wow, that was interesting. I, I had that vantage point. Um, and then there are a set of things which um, I, uh, uh, um, I said, which turned out to be not true. And I mean, turned out differently, um, which uh, for me is a learning experience to then introspect and go, so what was I thinking at the time? What information did I not have? What changed? Uh, what did I not factor in? And that makes me a better entrepreneur. That makes me a better investor. Because, um, I mean, looking at Indian startups, that remains a passion for me. That remains a, a mission for me. Interesting, interesting. So, Kashyap, a lot of things have happened, which are crazy. You know, this is 2020. COVID has happened. PTM has indeed grown like a banyan tree. <laughs> we, though this banyan tree is different from the banyan trees we've seen in the past. And there are some huge companies which are in a very troubled state right now, uh, especially Oyo. It's in a way, sadly, it's very sadly positioned at the moment. So what do you think is the future of the Indian entrepreneurial ecosystem from now? How How is it looking? Got it. So uh, look, uh, when I think of the Indian startup ecosystem, it's, um, there is, see, a lot of uh, imagination capture is, um, proportional to capital infused. Uh, so um, wherever there's higher capital concentration, people tend to talk more about those companies. So on those companies, my overall sense remains similar to at the time of writing the Golden Tap is um, a lot of that capital infusion is coming in because of war dynamics uh, in some sense about India being the next China and uh, whether China owns that territory or India owns that territory. And now Post COVID, you know, China is debarred from investing further in India, and uh, and so on, right? But it's a lot of that war dynamic is playing outside the shores, and you can have a lot of capital infusion, but ultimately these companies have to perform and uh, deliver profits and list in international markets because Indian markets don't have that uh, kind of depth. SoftBank was one quasi IPO which would bring liquidity to the VCs and other investors, and they're gone now at least from that perspective. So, uh, you know, there is exposure there where you should worry about uh, hyper-funded companies with high capital concentration. But the other side of it, which is, uh, which is amazing, is uh, the 2015, 2016 uh, bubble or sort of forest fire makes the ground more fertile, right? You need a forest fire for new life forms to shape up. And I can tell you from two decades of, uh, you know, being involved with Indian startups, the, the depth of um, ideas, expertise, um, using technology to solve problems is just insane. It's just amazing. It's uh, the, the Indian startups uh, have turned a corner and um, the number of companies, uh, the quality of companies, the quality of founders, quality of talent, um, and, and the volume of talent is, it, is um, and people are able to solve problems which have uh, wide reach. Um, it's not just a few, you know, it's, it's uh, impacting uh, all of India. So I would say to summarize, I would sort of break it into higher capital concentration I worry about, you know, so the hyper-funded ones I still worry about. Um, and um, but overall, there is a lot of, you know, India has got its fair share of capital infusion with, with a good amount of breadth like never before, uh, which is very hard. So Kashyap, you are based out of US and Hypertrack is doing very well, touch wood. And uh, you, as I said in the beginning, you are also an investor in a lot of Indian companies. So you're in touch with the Indian ecosystem as well. Uh, how do you look at your involvement in the future with the Indian ecosystem? Are you looking at uh, getting a finer grip? Sure. Uh, you know, I'm... Uh, I have customers in India, uh, which keeps me involved with India uh, very frequently. Pretty much every night, there is some sort of, you know, conversation with India or that part of the world uh, through my customers. Um, 
I have um, investors who are heavily invested and vested in the India market. So through them, I live vicariously as well. And besides that, you know, I have probably a portfolio of 50 to 60 companies that I'm invested in and a good number of them happen to be in India. So through them, I uh, kind of keep tabs on what's going on. Um, you know, going forward, um, you know, uh, so as an entrepreneur, my only priority is to run my company, make that successful, create that impact. Um, and um, in that journey, as it happens, you know, with, with entrepreneurs who've been around for a while, it becomes a network of, of people who sort of seek each other's help. And, you know, I lean on other people, they lean on me. So in those interactions, you run into people who you'd love to work with, who you'd love to back, you love their ideas, you sort of get involved, and um, many of them happen to be good investments. So, you know, I just request yeah. them to take some of my money. Um, <laughs> after the conversation, I'm like, dude, uh, okay, you, you, it was a good conversation. Would you please make some room for me and make me a shareholder in the company? And fortunately, many of them agree, which <laughs> keeps growing the portfolio. So it's just, you know, I'm, I'm so entrenched in that for life that it's, it's a way of life for me. There's no thinking about how I can, I can't even choose to, even if I want to disconnect myself from it. So beautiful and so humble. <laughs> Any plans of coming to India anytime soon? As soon as they open up uh, the travel and it's safe to travel, I, I had a plan to spend a whole month in the summer mm. in India, which I had to cancel. Mm -hmm. um, so the family is itching to go. I would love to go see my customers in person. Um, so yes, as soon as travel opens up, that's the first thing I'll do. Yeah, winters are a great time to come to <laughs> India, I'm sure. And I'm sure, uh, you know, fingers crossed. The winter of 2021. <laughs> <laughs> no, hopefully not this one. <laughs> hopefully before that. <laughs> yes, Kashyap, this is so nice. This is so nice. You're so humble and such insights, such humility. It's terrific. You're extremely nice to have joined us. So I'll just wind up the episode with uh, by thanking you and then also inspiring everybody to read The Golden Tap. So The Golden Tap is a phenomenal book. I've always mentioned it in my previous episodes, if you've watched uh, and recollect. Uh, just consider it India's shoe dog. <laughs> it's as good as that. I couldn't play a bigger comp pay a bigger compliment. I'm sorry, but it is indeed India's shoe dog. So read it as soon as possible and spread it across. Thank you so much, Kashyap. Thanks a lot. Please take care. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Nisha. Bye. Bye.